Well, hello. Yes, it's me, and yes, I'm in the woods. And yes, it has been a long time. About three months, maybe a little bit more, since I produced a video. Uh, there are reasons for that, which I'm going to explain shortly. But today, it's all about getting out, enjoying this mid-March break in the cold temperatures. I think spring is finally on the way. And I'm going to a spot where I can sit near the lake. It's kind of windy, so I can't sit right on the lake but near the lake where I can make some lunch. And you're invited to come along, enjoy the lunch with me, and hear the reason why I haven't been around for a while. Plus, I've got a few things I want to share with you. All right, follow along. This looks like a great place to have my lunch. Boy, it's good to be back here. Ugh. Lots of wind falls down. There's my firewood all collected for me. All right, maybe a drink of water, quick snack, and then we'll get started on lunch. All right, I just spent a few minutes going around the forest area here and all I had to do was just pick up dead standing off of the floor's floor make sure it was dry enough and I had everything I did no major processing wood other than to cut it and split it to size that I wanted to use it in the stoves so here is my cook kit today and my cook kit today the bowl from the zebra pot there lies the zebra pot and inside the zebra pot two things a fire kit I'll show you in a second and the stove of the day. Stove of the day, Simple Theory Gear. This is the PAC Stove XL from Mac at Simple Theory Gear. Mac, uh, I guess, appreciated the video that I did on the original Simple Theory Gear stoves and decided, unasked for, uh, unquestioned, with no expectations. He just sent me as a thank you the XL version, but you, uh, you know, after having gone through the XL version uh, quite extensively, as you'll see in a minute, uh, I've come to really appreciate the design changes Mac has, and how could I not do a review? So, here we have the XL from Simple Theory Gear, and uh, this is what we're going to have our lunch on today. Now, I did pack it inside of my 12 centimeter zebra, and you've seen in the earlier part of the video where uh, it'll fit, a number of things will fit inside of it, or it'll fit in inside of a number of things. It all depends on what pots you want to use and what you're going to be doing that day when you're in the woods. So it's nice to be able to have options in terms of stacking, and this works well with a number of different vessels. So I'm going to take it from here and put it in the fire pit next to me, and then I'll change the camera angle. And this also came from Mac. It was a nice little thank you. It's a heavy stainless steel wire grill, and the reason I brought the grill is Guys, we're going to be grilling some sausages, but that's another story. So let's get this set up and I'll get the fire started. So this is the fire pit I use quite often when I'm out in this location. You know, I haven't built too many fires in it. As you can see, there's just a little bit of coals from the last fire I had here. I think it was back in December when I was here. Uh, mostly because I'm testing so many wood stoves, I just don't have a need for a full-size open fire. But uh, what I have right now is frozen coals and ashes in the bottom of this fire pit. So this is going to be a good test of the XL. I expect what will happen is that it's going to be stable to start, but as it starts to heat up, it's going to sink in a little bit, and we'll just see how that goes. I'll have to be cautious to make sure it doesn't sink in in one corner and start to tip over. So I won't need today these two items, the speed plate or the ash pan slash uh, solid fuel plate. All I'm going to use is just that right where it is. Where's my feed port? There it is. Okay. I think I'll try and find a yeah, more or less level spot. Now, to get this going, I'm going to go with a bottom-up burn on this one. It won't take a whole lot. I'm putting in a little bit of birch bark. Just 
literally I picked up off the forest floor. Didn't have to peel any trees to find that. And I'm going to start with some small spruce twigs. Working up my way up to some, or actually it's pine, this is all pine. Another deadfall branch that was sitting right in the middle of my campsite. Off of the big pine over my head here. Would have been a widow maker, it was that big. But, we'll start with a small little bit of pine. And we'll work our way up to larger sizes. Enough to get the fire going. Now, I won't be grilling over the pine. As I'm sure you're aware, pine will give it a kind of a rank smell. So what I'll be doing is once I get a, a reasonably decent self-sustaining fire with lots of coals in the bottom, I have some splits of maple that I picked up off of the ground and just cut the size and split open. And those coals, once they're established, will be the grilling coals. For a couple of reasons. Not only does it uh, not smell like pine does, if you're grilling with that, but they last long enough that, yeah, I think that'll do it to get it going anyway. They last long enough that uh, I don't have to keep feeding fresh wood in and as a result end up with flames that uh, can make a mess of what you're using. I'll give you more on this, where am I? I'll give you more on this in a few minutes. This is a new kit from Uberleben they sent me for testing and review. And it's uh, an aluminum box that holds, well I have a couple things in here, but it's the foundation of a fire kit is what it's all about. But this is the way they are now packaging their tinder wick and bellows. They, you don't have to find a tin for it anymore. It comes with a tin and the tin is big enough to put a few things in like the three inch version of their hexa fits in there nicely. So that's what I'm going to use to get this fire started today. I did put a Bic lighter in, so inside the kit, I mean, I could put a few more fire starters, but I think this is all I need for most of what I need. I end up with a fire source or tinder source for getting it lit, lit and two ways of lighting it. So let's do this. So the trick to using the tinder wick and bellows, as I have in, shown in another video, is to flare the end up really well, get it all fuzzy, pull out quite a bit of it. Take your striker, hold it against the side of the striker, hopefully I'm staying in frame for this. And find a good spot on your ferro rod and get a hold of it so you can strike it properly. There we go, once you get a strike. And now I've got an, a flame source that I can put inside underneath where all the birch bark is and give that a second to ignite the birch bark. I think it's probably started already, but I'll give it another couple seconds. Great, great thing to have if you're tinder and everything in your wood is a little suspect, maybe not as dry, it needs a little extra boost to get it going. It's kind of like losing a, using a candle to do the same thing. Uh, and these uh, wicks on the tinder wick and bellows do last a nice long time. I think we're going now. Yeah. Pull that down inside. Put it away, ready for another fire. Now it's smoking, expectedly. That's a lot of birch bark. And the pine will smoke as well. So I am going to let this catch. I have to go find some water for my, my pot to get some water boiling here. As part of my lunch, I'll be uh, having something else with the sausages and I'll explain all that in a minute. So what I'll do is I will cut away and I'll come back when I go to put the pot on because I want you to see just how well this works with a pot on top of it. A lot of stoves will produce a lot of flame. But once you get a pot on top of them, they tend to dampen down and create a lot of smoke. So I first have to get by this initial burn where all that uh, damp wood and, uh, and birch bark burns off and I get some good hot flames going. And I feed some more sticks in and then I'll put the pot on and that's when I'll bring it back. All right, as the fire burns down, you know, I had to put a few more sticks in. Those little pine twigs burn fast, burn hot, but <laughs> then they're gone. So you have to put a few more pieces in to, to keep the fire going. So I did. Uh, now I'm just going to get my lunch ready. So I did say sausages that I'd be grilling. And these are going to be Oktoberfest sausages. Now, why Oktoberfest sausages? Well, specifically, uh, it, it, it's a very common dish 
in parts of Nova Scotia. I think it's enjoyed all over Nova Scotia and certainly other parts of the world. But along the south shore of our province, the area was originally settled by people that spoke German and Dutch. And of course, they brought along their traditions with them. And that means including their foods. And one of the favorite foods that they enjoyed quite often, very simple, but very tasty just the same, was sausages with sauerkraut. So sauerkraut and sausages, Oktoberfest sausages especially, I guess, uh, are still very popular down along the South Shore. And uh, my family, in fact, my father's uh, parents or grandparents were from that area, so I have some of that in my background as well. But uh, what I wanted to share with you was the sauerkraut specifically. So I, have, I brought along some sauerkraut I'm going to put in the little bowl that comes with the zebra because I want to heat it up just with a, a little bit of steam from underneath. But sauerkraut, if you're not familiar, is simply fermented cabbage. Yeah, that's all it is, it's fermented cabbage. Literally, it's uh, grown as big cabbages, chopped up and, into small pieces, put in barrels, covered with uh, water and a brine, and, allow, and submerged in the barrels, and allowed to ferment until it's ready to consume. And uh, it's tasty, it really is. Now, it's unique, it's sharp. It's tangy. It's not for everybody right up front, and you can do things to it. The easiest way to eat sauerkraut is just the way it is, but you're welcome to put anything on it from mustard to spices or anything else you want. I have just a little bit of spice that I'm going to be using with the sauerkraut. That's not the top. All right, there we go. Uh, I have uh, some spices to put on the sauerkraut, and of course I have some German mustard to put on the sausage. So, there it is. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. There, that's sauerkraut. And I have a, oh Lord, i got a lot of it here. Well, it's not a lot of calories, not really, not a lot of calories. And interestingly, because it is fermented, there are many, many health benefits that come along with eating this, including a whole lot of probiotics that uh, are, of course, good for our digestion and a number of other reasons. But to heat this up, and you can eat it cold, but it, it's nice warm as well. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom of my zebra. Put this on top, put the lid on, and I'll put that up over the fire. And what I'll do is reposition the camera because it's a good opportunity to show you the Simple Theory gear and how well it works once you put a pot on. So give me a second. All right, I think you've got a good view of it. Now I'm, I am casting shadows of myself. I wonder if I can bring you in a little closer so you can get a little bit better view it here. Good, all right. So I ended up putting some quite big chunks of pine inside so you can see it. Uh, yeah, it's working well, good. All right, lots of flame. Let's put this on top. And the 12 centimeter sits on perfectly. I'm a little worried about the ground, but it looks like it's going to melt in and be stable, good. Right? And there's what I wanted to show you, no smoke. No real smoke, nothing that the pine wasn't producing all by itself even before I put the pot on. And now I can just feed in some pieces of wood through the side window of the feed port on the side. Keep this fire going. And as my water comes to a boil, a little bit of smoke because I just loaded so much wood in. Uh, as my water comes to a boil, it'll heat up my sauerkraut and I'll be able to just put the whole can the whole bucket or the whole sorry the whole belly can aside and the hot water underneath will keep my sauerkraut warm while I throw in some maple and uh, get those coals ready to put the sausages on. So I'll give that a few minutes and then we'll be ready to put the sausages on and we'll come back. All right what I'm finding with uh, I think this is common to all stoves but it is also especially with small wood stoves and that is if they have good airflow there's a good chance that they're going to go through the wood pretty fast so even though I do have some pretty good sized pieces of maple that I've been putting in uh, that's still going through it so I end up with the, the wood burning nicely but when it gets down to the point of being coals uh, they uh, they burn through pretty quick so it looks like I am going to be cooking over flame a little bit more than I would normally like to, but let's give it a go. I just have to keep the sausages moving. Oh, they're a good sized sausage too. This is a big lunch. Now they'll shrink up a lot, of course, and uh, once they start spitting fat out, there'll probably be flames from that. They're already blackening from the flames, but flames are dying down very quickly, so I shouldn't have too much of an issue with with being all smoked up or sooted up, as often happens. 
I just keep the flames down to a minimum and keep the sausages moving. So there's how that piece of PEX piping works with uh, an, a fork and a spoon to create a set of tongs. And yes, I do have a set of wooden ones I made here, right here. Actually, I could have been using these wooden tongs, but uh, I wanted to use these so I could display the utensil wrap from uh, my friend Rob. All right, good. Flames are dying down now. I may have been in a little bit too much of a rush to get them on. All right, now this is going to take a few minutes. You know, sometimes you come out and you have sausages that are pre-cooked. And then it's just a matter of heating them up and getting them some nice searing. These aren't. These aren't pre-cooked. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, if I had wanted to speed the process up when I was preparing the... Uh, the water for to heat the sauerkraut. I could have put these right in the water and kind of give them a parboil, and that would have gone a long ways to bringing them to a cook state a little bit quicker. In hindsight, it probably would have been the best thing to do, <laughs> but there you go. So I uh, will just work on these for a little bit, and uh, once these are done, we'll have lunch, and then we'll have a discussion about where I've been and what I've been up to. All right, lunch. A napkin. Fancy dining. More about keeping the grease, grease from dripping all over me from the sausages. Little container to German mustard. And my lunch. Simple but tasty. I can bring that into you. Sauerkraut, Oktoberfest sausages, cooked on gr hot grills on the Simple Theory Gear pack stove. My mustard handy. I think I'll just dump a little bit right into the bowl. There we go. What do we got here? You know, being out in the woods doesn't mean you have to rough it when it comes to food. It takes a little work to coordinate everything. And honestly, I'm a little bit out of practice, so I'm a little rusty at it. But getting all the things done is a bit of a learning curve, but once you do, you can produce some great meals. I'm not a cook. I, I, I never claim to be, but uh, this turned out, I was gonna say at least as good as something I could do at home, but of course better because it's in the woods and cooked over a fire. Sauerkraut. Mm. A couple of our local street vendors have uh, sausages on their carts and they have sauerkraut as an option. So you can pick up a bun, load it with sauerkraut, get one of their eight or 10 inch long sausages, put that on top, put some mustard on it, and everything is compact into one easy to eat dish. Let me know below if you've tried sauerkraut and Oktoberfest sausages. And of course, if you have, do you enjoy it? I do. I don't eat it all the time, of course. Um, I think I'd eat it more often if I had it. All right, let's take a minute to talk about where have I been? What have I been doing? Why no videos? I'd like to begin by thanking all of my viewers who stuck with me, especially my subscribers who stuck with me over the last three months. But a special thanks goes out to those viewers, and there was quite a few of you, who reached out to me personally to ask what was going on. Am I okay? You know, what, where have you been? What's going on? Uh, some did it through messages right on some of the videos. Some looked up my email on my YouTube site because it's there, and some found me on Facebook. Special thank you to you, for you folks for checking in on me. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. In fact, right now, I'm, I couldn't be happier. But there is a reason why I ended up 
uh, taking a break from Christmas right through until now, mid-March. And it was just a couple of things that happened at the same time. So the first thing that happened, and it may be apparent in the last couple of videos I did, is that my camera was starting to give me problems. It was a camera I bought secondhand five years ago when I started my YouTube channel, and it served me very well. Uh, it's still a great camera. I'd recommend it to anybody. It was a Canon Vixia. I paid $80 for it on Kijiji. I got my money's worth out of it, but it was time to replace it because the sound was not recording properly. The video was not focusing in properly. I was having issues with it, and it was time to replace the camera. So what do I get? I considered getting another video camera, but I did some research, and I came up with a camera that uh, not only filled all the niches that I wanted to, but was beyond. So it'll take me further into video making and picture taking, I hope. The only problem was I had no idea how to use it. So I ended up buying a Canon EOS M50 mirrorless camera. And uh, I'll let you look that up. I'll put it in the show notes if you're interested. And uh, it was well rated for doing exactly the type of video making that I'm doing here out in the woods. It had a better range of light. Uh, there is so many options on it. There's so much that you can do with it that I just, I had to learn how to do with it. And I'm still learning, still making mistakes as I go. But part of the reason why my other camera was uh, failing is because I kept tipping it over and it would hit the ground or hit a rock and I was getting dents and scratches and cracks in it. And the reason I was tipping it over was because I was using a wired lavalier or lapel microphone. So it had this eight or 10 foot lapel mic that I clipped on my, my jacket or my shirt and it went back to the camera. And if I was standing still, that was fine. But the moment I turned, I'd end up pulling on the, on the, uh, the wire and it might be caught in branches or anything, and the whole camera would tip over. So I went through three of those microphones like that. So, uh, you know, putting good money after bad, I think that's the expression. They worked well, but they're not meant for the woods. So that's the other thing I did, is I purchased a wireless microphone system. It's called the Wall Rode Wireless Go, and I'll put a link for that below as well. Okay, so the two of those things together, and a few accessories that I needed to go with it, brought me in at about $1,500 Canadian. That's much more than I thought I would invest. Uh, I'm going to be using what little money AdSense sends to, sends to me to be paying that off for a while. So, but I'm really, really happy with it. And it's, it's, it's a, I guess after five years, it's time I did invest a little bit of money in the channel and to get some better video going. Let me know what you think. Do you like the video that this camera is producing? Everything from now on is going to be using this camera. So hopefully I get the hang of it and get to use it correctly and produce some good video with it. Uh, yeah, so that was one reason. It took me a while to get the camera and then get used to using the camera. The second reason was right around Christmas, I wrenched my back. Now, it's an old work-related injury uh, and it's developed into arthritis in my lower back and on and off I had been going to a chiropractor and physiotherapist and osteopath to keep my back mobile and it works most of the time, but I did enough of an injury around Christmas that it put me laid me low for a while. Now, not completely. I could get out and walk and things, but I, I just couldn't carry a backpack in the woods. Well, now I can. And, uh, you know, thanks to all those professionals and doing all the stretching and all the things that I'm supposed to be doing, uh, I am now in a point where I feel much, much better. Now, there's always going to be some pain and it's not, it just is, I guess. It's just one of those things we're growing old. Arthritis is mo a fact of life for most of us and I have it in my lower back. So I'm consciously conscious of it but not to the point where it's going to stop me from doing what I really enjoy doing, which is coming out and being in the woods and making videos. So those are the two reasons. That's it. Nothing big. I'm back. I have a lot of videos I want to make. I, 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 I can't tell you how many videos. i got a huge list. A lot of them are stove videos, stove reviews of, video, of stoves that I've had for a while. Thank you for all the patience the manufacturers have demonstrated in allowing me to take this uh, bit of a break before coming back. I have a couple more through night flashlights that I want to share with you. Now, I never thought I'd be that guy, the one that has nothing but through night flashlights on his channel. And I don't intend on being that guy, uh, but through night contacted me and they've offered me different flashlights over the last little while. And I've turned a few of them down because of the style, the niche that they fit. They were tactical style flashlights, and I have no interest in a tactical style flashlight. Maybe if I had been, if I was still a police officer on patrol, oh yeah, but not now. Not that I'm uh, out in the woods. I just want lightweight, 
effective flashlights that I can carry that have a long battery life and a reasonable amount of lumens that I can use when I'm out camping. I have one with me today. It's a new one that I, I'll, a review will be coming on shortly. It's what I, goes in my backpack every day hike just in case I'm caught out. And I'll share that one with you in a little bit. So I have a couple flashlight reviews. I, I may do more in the future depending on if it's the right flashlight for me. I have some stoves to mention. I have a couple of axes, Prandi axes from Italy. Uh, thank you, Prandi, for the patience you've shown. I've had them 10 months probably. It's about time I've done a review. I've used them extensively and I'll bring that review hopefully out shortly. I have skills videos that I want to do. Things like what you can make out of wood. Uh, a hiking staff is one of them and I'm, I hope to get that one out pretty soon. As well as a few others. Plant identification and uses. That's, that's a big hobby of mine. I really enjoy that. Finding plants in the woods, knowing what they are, knowing what I can use them. I think that's a, a very primary bushcraft skill. So I'll continue doing that. What I'd like to do is open to you and ask you, what type of content would you like to see on my channel? Would you like me to continue with the content I have? Content I have? Would you like me to do more of one, less of another, or something new that I haven't done yet? Let me know in the comments section below. Okay, uh, my lunch is getting cold. I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll make some coffee and then before the, uh, have another little talk before we close the video out. A little bit strong. I didn't get quite enough water in it, but uh, strong is good. Oh, all right. Sun is starting to go down in the west. That's where it usually goes down, right? And uh, I'm just enjoying a cup of coffee. Wow, it's, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back out in the woods, just to be back at it. You know, with the pandemic, and all the restrictions, and I know they're different all over the world. I have a daughter in Florida and a son and his wife in the UK, so uh, I know what the different restrictions people are facing, and I hear from my other, my commenters, um, my viewers, from what they're facing. There's one thing that at least we've been able to do all along here in Nova Scotia, and that is to get out into the woods. And there was a period of time here in the first of the year that I didn't take advantage of that, but now that I feel more like it, up to, up to speed again, I'm gonna be getting out as often as I can. As you can see behind me, the lake is still frozen, but it's got that white punky look to the ice, the kind of ice you're not feeling too comfortable about. And you can see puddles of uh, meltwater sitting on top of it because the strength of the sun is, is growing. Now it's probably still safe to be on, but uh, I have no intention of risking it. There's no need for me to be out there on the ice right now. So it won't be long and that'll be open. And then maybe I'll get my kayak back in. I am looking for a canoe. If I can swing it, sell my kayak and then buy the canoe with the same money. You know, I, I don't know what else I can say. If you have been feeling penned up by the pandemic and all the restrictions and everything that we can't do and uh, take heart, take heart. And if you can get out, even if it's just a walk around the block, you know, that is, that'll clear your mind of, of a lot of the clutter that happens when you're sitting in your house all the day. And for those of you who have been able to get out, keep getting out. And those of you who are experiencing spring ahead of us, which is probably most of the world, uh, get out and enjoy it. Start looking for the plants that are coming up out of the ground. Start practicing your identification. And I'll be out again soon, very soon, to make another video. But until I am, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.